Hello, I'm Graham Fitch. I'm a pianist and teacher of piano and I'm bringing you this series of videos on the Casio Grand Hybrid from my teaching studio in Wimbledon. What we're going to look at now is the record and playback feature. I want to show you how useful this is going to be for your practice and I'm going to take an intermediate piece. In fact, I'm going to take the Mozart Minuet, which is Kirkel number 355 for those of you who are interested in such details. And I'm going to show you how I can record it and then when I listen to it back I've got a little practice checklist here where I can note those things that haven't quite worked um, that I might not hear when I'm actually playing it and because the technology on this instrument is so good you'll find that you get a very accurate um, recording of what you actually did you're going to sound um, how you sounded when you played there's no distortion there's no funny uh, background sound. So from that point of view, it's a very faithful and accurate example of, of how I sounded. So I'm gonna just begin now. I'm gonna play the first little bit of this minuet. Um, all I have to do, it's simplicity itself, all I have to do is to press the record button. And as soon as I start to play, um, it will record me. Now I turn that off and what I'm going to do is to listen back to what I did. Now of course I did deliberately do some things there just for the purposes of, of this demonstration. I did do some things deliberately wrong um, otherwise I wouldn't have anything to fix for you would I? So what I'm going to do now is as I listen back I'm going to make little notes on what I wasn't entirely happy with. I've got some categories here notes, rhythm, fingering, dynamics, character, and I, very important for everything we do at the piano, I put, did it feel good? Did it sound good? It has to feel good, has to sound good before we can check it. So now let me listen through. And as we listen through, I might find myself stopping the, stopping the recording to, to write down and also to explain to you what I'm not happy with. All I have to do is press the play button. Right, now the first thing I'm not happy with in that first phrase is my balance in the right hand was wrong. Now I might not have picked that up when I'm playing. Might, I might say, if I were a student, I might say, oh well I'll wait for my teacher to fix that, that's what teachers are for. But actually you'll find that you can really seriously accelerate your learning. If you can learn to listen critically yourself, this feature will really help you to do that. What I noticed in my right hand was my tonal balance was favoring the lower of the two voices. Let me play you what the right hand's doing. Do you hear that? Parallel thirds. And what I want to do is to make the upper third just a little bit stronger than the lower third so that I can hear it. Remember the rule of the piano, the lower the note, the greater the resonance. So if I'm wanting to hear a tune on the top and a shadow on the bottom, to balance my sound. Did you hear the difference there between that and this, the old way? Where I could hear the lower note stronger, played by the stronger fingers. So it's kind of obvious that it would stick out unless I did something to, to stop that. So I'm going to make a little note here. I'm going to make a note in, in dynamics. I'm going to put here balance of right hand so that when I practice it again I've got some actual facts in front of me that I can concentrate on before I repeat. Let me listen further. See what I'm picking up from that uh, very clearly is that my dynamics have got so smoothed out I can't really hear the difference between the forte and the piano. So I'm going to put here under dynamics again, forte piano contrasts. 
Now, one other thing I noticed when I listened back to it that I wasn't aware of when I first played it is that the character is just a bit sluggish. It feels a bit Monday morning-ish to me and I want it to dance a bit more. So if I put here, feel um, strong first beat and move a little bit, let it move a little bit further. Now I could go on, but I won't. I think this gives you an idea of how to use a practice checklist so that now I could go back and play it again, um, hopefully with all of those issues addressed. And then I would listen back to that and just check that everything I'd heard from the first recording had been improved and corrected. This makes practicing really productive and actually really interesting and absorbing. And you could go on and do that process for as many times as you wanted until you'd got the result that you were happy with.